Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, you are very welcome to a beautiful sunny afternoon here in Amsterdam at Windmill 15 in 2019. I am Lord Murray and it is my pleasure, an old friend, <laughs> an older adversary. The band's back together. A wonderful man, <laughs> a better lover. <laughs> Ravi Vasu David, how are you doing? I'm doing great. It's been a great day after a bit of a scare here with the torrential downpours early on, but we've managed to get all the rounds in and we've made it. To the semifinals, Lorcan. We have the Condors in blue versus the Czech Republic in white. Czech Republic upsetting Ireland. I think many picked Ireland to be a semifinalist here. Certainly upset me. <laughs> As Condors get things going. So we see them coming out here strong at the start of the match. And we've seen them strong all weekend long. One of the more impressive outfits. Michael with the disc in the middle of the pitch. So physically fit, so physically imposing. Sending it down the line. It's Condors and Friends, and that's a huge blade. Looked like it was too far, but somehow collecting it on the other end, Jesse Cohen. That was a hardy play by a hardy man. I believe the Czechs are calling it out the sideline. The I'd Czech sideline is surprised. Here, we're going to see. His foot was on the line. Well, then, that is out. So if they choose to come to us, they can. That is within the rules, although a lot of people seem to uh, be fine without utilizing that as the disc will go back. It was an incredibly close one. I thought it was always going to hit dirt before it hit a hand. An incredibly impressive run by and Cohen to get the disc. They have come to us indeed here. And looks there, his foot was on the line when he caught the disc. So that one is going to go out. And I think they're going to agree with that, but I'm not sure. And they have. A wonderfully accurate hammer over to the top. So in the latter change exchanges of the conversation, they go to us. So Czech Republic, a team that not a lot of people would have seen making the semifinal. And I, I think it's fair to say not a lot of those people would have been in the Czech Republic either. Hey, they did this in 2015, the last EUC cycle. They shocked their way to the final against GB then. We'll see if they can do that now. The other side of the semifinal, the open division, is GB versus Austria. I called earlier today. Austria versus Condors, there the Condors were the clear favorites, but here the Czechs with an early chance to get a break. So let's see if they can capitalize. Starting off, some nice quick movement, getting it to Halamka. Thinks about the deep, decides against it. They're patient, they're not trying to force anything. They wouldn't want to, they don't have to. We've seen them perform under incredible pressure on the defensive end though perhaps not against the elite level of athleticism that the Condors bring to the table. As they continue cycling around for winding up, there's the huge shot, chasing after it is Pivik. And he collects it, magnificent stuff out of the Czechs early in this matchup. And that's a 1-0 lead there for the Czechs as they take a break early in this game. You talked about the athleticism of the Condors. What impressed me the most when they played Austria is their quickness, especially the way they do their dump defense. They'll kind of give you a little bit of a space, but once that disc goes up, they can get their paw in there with their explosive legs that I'm sure they train at the gym time and time again. Here on that long distance huck, you saw the Czech player get the right position, get the right timing, and it's just easy stuff there for the Czechs. Fantastic effort out of this Czech side. And that, those are the kind of throws that I don't think a lot of their opponents expected to see Czech throwing with such confidence. Here, we're going to see a replay again on that. You see his foot is on that line by the time he touches the disc. So he's out of bounds, and the Czech Republic take a 1-0 lead. So first blood to the Czechs. The Condors looking to strike back. Centering it to the middle. Good cutting, lots of space. Clearing well for each other. This Condors team knows each other so well, working very hard, and there's Messing going all the way to the end zone for the easy score, and well, they made that look rather effortless. Absolutely, they're incredibly fast, incredibly quick with their moves, and are able to score there. Joram Mosink, a Dutchman, 
who has spent some time in San Diego. I think he was actually a big part of bringing this Condor squad over to his home country. A lot of these guys are his friends. Condor's officially from Santa Barbara, but I think this group is a bit more of a collective from Southern California and even some Bay Area guys. There you see Mr. Molsink himself. Very effective in that last game with his throws and with his explosive cuts. He fits right in with these Condors as having a great time. 1-1 one, one the score as Condors put things even. Now we're going to get a first shot at these Condors when they start on defense. And we'll see if this Czech O-line for the first time this game will have the poise to deal with them. The D-line offense did it. Can the O-line do it? These are the big questions that they will be asked. The Czech O-line was very sturdy against Ireland who threw just about everything they had at them including two very close touches on the disc that the Czechs were able to recover, one of which is one of the best second chance grabs I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> Irish defender Niall McCarthy got a huge block on a hook, then tried to box out his man, and somehow the Czechs were able to literally lay out around him. How close was that game exactly? It ended on Universe. On Universe. Ten. That's what we like to see here at Windmill. Condors also beat the Irish team on Universe as well, so it's the battles of the <laughs> two teams who've beaten the Irish. Huge! Catch, standing up strong and taking the hit. It's Marek Dostal. So difficult to stop. And I think a warranted foul non-contest there called. A little bit of a dangerous play from the Condors, but sometimes these boys like to play physical as here. The Czechs keep it going. So looking for options. Jago has been having himself an absolutely fantastic tournament as well. As you see him get the disc, he can throw just about anything has been a perfect example of confidence. Huge catch under the pressure. Slavek, another very impressive player at this tournament for the Czechs, both against France and against Ireland. Great catch under that pressure. The physicality mounting from the Americans. So far, the Czechs haven't been too frustrated by it. They're playing through it. Actually hasn't even caused a turnover yet. Svatos looking for a dump eventually gets when they lose a lot of yards. But Chego gets it back to Svatos down the line. Dostal back to Svatos, and this is good from the Czechs. Like you said, confident. A lot of pressure, but they seem like they're handling it well. Svatos has had it for a while. Eventually forced to pop one up. Lots of contact on Dostal down in the end zone. I think a foul is clearly going to be called there. You see the accepting head nod of the Condors defender. So the oh, there was also an uncontested stall out called, so I believe it will still be a turn here. So a foul on contest, stall out on contest. Condors keep the disc and actually get better field position. That's what you call a tactical change. That could be a big swing in this game. This Condors D-line have had fantastic returns for their investments. And there's a huge hook all the way down there, a little bit physical. Two check players, neither of them able to stop the Condors flow. Two throws, brilliant stuff out of the Americans. And there you see Check O-line, very, very steady with the disc. A little bit of a mistake there, maybe not using their reset, getting stalled out, seeing something he liked, and just holding onto it a bit too long. And then when the Condors come back on offense, really the Condors O-line, sorry, the check O-line defense had nothing to stop those Condors. So the Condors earn back their break. Get it 2-1. Taking the that I think a lot of people assumed they would have from the start of this game through to the end. The Czechs far from out of it. They're going to look to bounce back. Never a team to let their heads drop. Certainly not for too long. So two big players to watch out for on this Czech O-line. I personally think our Fencil, that's number nine, and Chiego, number 12. They've got an awful lot of throws in their repertoire. Also aren't afraid to go deep. It was actually Fencil. A man renowned for always being there to let off their dumps. Going deep, they got the winning score. So versatile players who seem to get better when the pressure gets highest. Czech Republic have a few top club teams. Of course, Fui probably the most famous, but 3SB, another club making a lot of moves here in the European scene. Prague Devils, Yellow Fever, lots of clubs, mostly around Prague, all coming together here to combine to make this Czech national team side. Just goes some way to explaining why it is so impressive. Sladek gets it into the middle. Svatos. You see Fensel with that crafty cutting we were talking about and a wry smile from the Condor player who realizes he got got. I Jakob. thought that long shot was going to be on, but looked off. That centered all the way 
way back to the middle of the pitch, Jago. This is good patient work from the Czechs. They trust their cutters, and they don't really feel a need to force anything. Good value work from Jago, so difficult to cover in that space. Blush is saved somewhat by Dostal, that throw behind him. Reaches back and grabs it. Fensel trying to get free. Fundamentals, keeps the swing going to Svathos, gets it back. Svathos clears, great switching by Condors though. Fluid defense. Slavic, and they are really having to work hard. Lots of pressure here from the Condors, not giving the check an inch in this red zone. We saw that in them against Austria as well. They play good defense up until the red zone, and then they really clamp things on and stop scores. And here, the Czech have thrown it like 20 to 25 times, and Pencil still keeping it alive, but this is tough stuff. And there's the timeout. So much defensive pressure. Jago had to go for that hammer. Sladek making Fensel work for it. It's so difficult to throw around those marks, the Americans. And even if the Czechs score this one, we're going to see here again this grab from Fensel. If the Czechs score this one, this is a big win for the Condors defense. They have gotten inside the Czech O-line's heads. They have shown them the kind of pressure they're to expect this whole game. It's going to make them a little more hesitant. So far, they've been patient, but just amazing, amazing shutdown and switching defense from the boys in blue. I would agree, except if there's one thing I've seen the Czechs do, it's look shut down on the dump and just stay true to each other. Stay hardworking, stay loyal. They did it against France on the stream. I saw them do it against Ireland in their quarterfinal. The, I thought they were out several times. It's getting high in the stall count. You're like, all right, this is going to be a turnover. It's going to be a risky pass. And they pull it off. Sometimes through hammers, sometimes through great athletic plays, but always with a basis in trust. Was Ireland up much of that game, or was it pretty even going through the whole time? Or It was very even. Go? Ireland managed to go up with one of their few breaks of the game, I think to take it 7-6, maybe 8-7. And then the Czechs responded with a hold and a break of their own to take the lead right back. So Ireland were briefly ahead, but were never able to maintain it. Czechs spent most of that game in a bit of a power position. And we will see as you see us on the camera here. Can the Czechs keep their composure and work with their legs through this Condors defense to get this score? See them coming out in a vertical stack, very traditional. Condors will certainly have a good idea of what the Czechs are gonna try to do here. But the question is, can you beat them when they know what you're gonna do? We're not gonna trick them, we're gonna beat them. See the first cut come off. Sladek isn't able to beat his man. A rare occurrence for the young Czech. Fensel's able to beat his on the break. Nah, it's a bit more common. You see Dostal. He has Fensel, waiting for him to make a move. It's a stutter step. That's not going to work against the Condors. Gilligan comes with the disc. Eats it up after that great defensive set by the Condors. And now they have a chance to go up by another point. And that's the thing. If you're going to cut against the Condors, it has to be determined. You will not get away with just stutter steps and shimmy shakes. And look at how quickly they sweep all the way down the pitch, doing such a good job of leaving space for their cutters. <laughs> Sweeping across to the opposite side of the pitch. Will Turner tries to get it to Raj. Huge pressure from Checo. And it bounces out of the hands of Raj Marita. Raj Marita. Checo, what a play. I definitely thought that was just an easy open side pass when that went off, but Checo gets his big body out in front, and Fensel trying to start things up again as the Condors are going to try and shut down this beautiful Czech offense. I'm sure Marita would want to get that one back against, against Checo. There's Dostal on the far sideline, as Sladek in the middle gets it to him. Cycles like down to Svatos. Lots of pressure. Physical marking. Svatos winds up a big blade. He's trying to get it down the pitch, but couldn't quite. Came off a bit short, and Marita unmarked. Start to see Condors working it down the pitch again very quickly before calling a timeout. Two timeouts early here in this game. The score is still 2-1. Condors up one break, and with the disc in hand to get a second. Two timeouts in the same point even. Now Condors I, showing some respect to the Czech Republic. I know this Condors team isn't really a, a full team with strict O and D lines, but if they were, and they kind of are. I think this is a very good point for them. They are tiring out the Czech O-line in this point. Even if they don't score this one, this point goes really, really long. That's going to tire out the Czech O-line and make it harder for them to keep consistent throughout this game. 
But like you've said before, the Czechs have come back from deficits before. We saw them go down early against the French. We saw them go down a break against the Irish. They're surely very mentally strong. But the heat's coming down, Lorcan. The sun's out. And this has to be advantageous for the Condors right now. Well, if the sun's out, I think you got to bring your guns out and maybe go bird hunting. We know the Czech are a contentious people. And the Condor is quite the trophy. They already have a couple of scalps from this weekend, and they got them. Maybe hubris played into it a little bit. <laughs> Maybe. I'd certainly say that against the French. And by the time Ireland made it to the quarterfinals, they're really starting to feel themselves. That just seemed like a knockdown, drag-out fight that the Czechs managed to stumble away from the technical victor and fight their way into the semi-final. The Condors have had a bit more of a breezy time flying through, swoop, swooping in, as they like to put it themselves. Not to try and get you guys off our stream, you can put double streaming if you want. We're also having a Cosmic Girls Finland semifinal, it looks like, on the other side of this showcase pitch. So feel free to tune into YouTube and watch that. It's going to be a great semi as well. Everything's coming down to the wire here at Windmill 15. Lots of exciting action. And of course, tomorrow, these stands will be full to the brim with fans, with beers, with burgers, all watching the final, see who's going to go home with the Golden Elephant. Right now, right here, we're in the semifinals 2-1 for the Condors as they look to get another break off of this timeout. So the action starts again. Now this is good initial defense by the Czechs. Lots of pressure, eventually winds up in the hands of Turner, gets it down the field. Weaver, playing it through. Aiden, over the top, down on the line. I think they were about to start celebrating, but perhaps prematurely until Marita arrives and finishes it off. Gilligan with the assist. Great movement from the Condors again. The Czechs not really applying a lot of pressure. And that's 3-1. And you see, I see a lot of Czech D-line players going out on the field. That was a very long point. We'll have to see if the coach wants to put their O-line back out there or not. It could be a dangerous thing. But we did see that D-line get a break as well. They have scored themselves. So not out of the game yet. But actually, technically, the D-line has scored the only point for the That's Czechs. what I was going to say. You'd like to see your O-line actually start to convert. I mean, you're not going to win a game if your D-line's the only one who scores. So, Condors starting to stretch out. Three on the hop. Feeling themselves, which is exactly what you don't want to let them do. The Czech D-line going to come out here and see if they can show their O-line how to do it. Really good stuff out of the Czech O-line, it has to be said. Just a bit better defense from the Condors. They have been very close to them this whole game. But they haven't been close enough as the Condors still proving themselves the better outfit. And in every match, every fight, it seems like the Czechs have had to prove themselves, and so far in every fight and every match, they have. So we'll wait to see the results of this one. I'm curious if these two teams have faced each other yet. I actually don't think they probably haven't, given that the Czechs were a little further down the ranking than the Condors were for most of this tournament. Prack gets the disc in the middle of the pitch and wastes no time sending it deep. Lots of players underneath it. There was a bit of a battle. When you see Stetka going, you really think he's going to be the one to come down with it. It's number 64, the captain for Czech Republic. Great defensive play there by the Condors, though. He was sandwiched by two Czech players and got up huge to tip that one away. Dom Legio with the big time play. This Condors team feels like there's a, every position is capable of a big time defensive play. And that's a hard thing to go up against. That break all the way around, a fantastic. The Condors keep going. Tireless work, committed cutting. So effective at leaving space for each other to work in. Not trying to force anything. Comfortable that once somebody is activated, they put in the work, but there's the defensive play, huge block. On the end zone line, fantastic stuff by Philip Halamka. This is their D-line, of course. They have the guys that are on there to make those plays. I do think the defensive intensity from this line is better than what the O-line had been able to put on the Condors' last two points. But of course, we had to get a beautiful layout D from the O-line as well. Now the Czechs have another chance, and now they're back deep in their defending end zone. 
Looking for options, finding one in the form of a huge hawk downfield. And again, they're looking for their big receivers on the other end to shoot themselves out of it. Pivek couldn't quite get around that one, a bit too much pressure on him. I don't think that's how they're gonna be able to play their way out of this one. Nick Almo Smith, they're getting huge though. Condor's making huge plays every single time. Big floaty discs don't seem to be what's gonna work. They're gonna have to make a bit more laser focus on their hucks if they wanna be successful against these Condors. You could always go with the option of just throwing them a little bit earlier. As the Condors close that space under a floaty disc so quickly. And now they're looking to extend that gap. A beautiful inside out backhand. Plenty of lift and plenty of speed to catch it. Excellent stuff by the Condors. And they're starting to really gain control of this matchup. The confidence and body language we're seeing from the Condors must be threatening to the Czechs. I mean, it's really hard to go up against that. You see that they're playing with swagger, they're playing with fun. It looks like they're just playing catch out there from time to time. They just have the athletic edge on the Czechs right now and it's showing up both on defense and both on offense. 4-1 now as the Condors look to be flying their way towards the final by the way things are going now. Another look at that beautiful break inside. And then this for a leading pass. That's just special. That's showing off for the cameras and the fans back home. are still in the morning. So a nice little throw to wake you up. It's a nine hour time difference, Lorcan. I have no idea what time it is now because Madness. I'm commentating and playing and just, just bouncing back and forth. There's no idea. <laughs> well, judging by the position of the sun in the sky, I would say it's daytime. As the Condors looking to fly through the sky themselves. Straight into the final. Benzel. Has other ideas. Checo. They see to send Ostal deep immediately. The throw doesn't come. Instead, forced to reset. They're working very hard, but not gaining that many yards. Out onto the far sideline, and Svatos can only watch as that one bounces out of his hands. Unforced error great. there, but if you force that many passes like the Condors did, eventually one of them might go awry. Here, just a little bit of a drop. Goes for the casual left-handed grab. And if the Condors get this one, that'll be a 5-1 lead. Mossink. He has Turner in the dump position. Instead, takes the open shot. That's the Alamo. Sorry, that's not the Alamo. It's Tyler Bacon. Tyler Bacon. Bacon. Lovely feed. Wonderful dump cutting. And then Turner gets that one out wide. Taking their time, the Condors just keep swinging it back and forth until Weaver can get his hands around the disc and send it to Aiden Hull for the score. Making it look easy. I don't know what you can really say here with the checks and what they can do differently. I think they're, they're playing their systems, they're playing their offense well. It's just they're being outmatched athletically. And that's something you have to improve over years and years of work, not something you can really improve in one game. So I'm not sure what the coach can tell their team, as I think the Czechs are taking a timeout, but I'm not exactly certain. So now we just see here. No, it seems they're not taking the a brilliance time. of dump resetting. And the timing of their cuts. One of the things I think they do so well is just everybody on the pitch, whenever they're moving, they're moving into the correct position. Like a lot of the times, especially in Europe, some people are moving, they're just kind of tired or they're just slowly working themselves out how to get out of the way. The Condors are constantly setting up the next move, setting up the next play. That comes from hard clearing, which generates space, and then being aware of that space and moving into it, and they're doing both extremely well. That's, I think, something that's under undervalued in, in European Ultimate especially, is hard clearing to generate space. People make the cut, they don't get it, and then they get frustrated, and then they kind of jog back to the stack, whereas here the Condors grind, 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 and clear as hard as they're cutting, and that's what's making it so easy for them to score. So let's see if the Jacks can respond. Now is the time before this game slips out of reach. Pencil. We know he has a few hucks in his toolkit. Jacko. See a little bit of poaching from the check uh, from the Condors handler defense. 
trying to force these swings, force them into a lot of passes, make those upfield passes difficult, stop their hucking game. So far, it's been effective. Checo with the disc. And there's a big one all the way down the field, looking for Prushak and getting him. Great stuff That's there from the Czechs. They're finally answering back, finally with the confidence they need. They have to get the Condors to respect that deep game because if they don't, they can shut down all those unders. And maybe this will help to open up their offense later on in this game, but it's going to take breaks to get them back. And so far, they've gotten one earlier on in this game. Came from a bit of an errant throw that just got towed out of bounds. Question is, can they generate some more pressure defensively to get this disc back? We've seen a couple great layout Ds, and they have to get more and more of them. Well, it's great. It's going to be good to see that D-line come back out. Although a good few of them were pulling a bit of double duty to try and help play check back into the game. You see Fenzel getting it to Checo. Good to see the traditional O-line for the Czech team get a score. Not so good to see them do it on the fifth opportunity, but... Look, they all count, even the ugly <laughs> ones. <laughs> but yeah, you never feel as good about the ugly ones as you do about the pretty ones. So now, Czech Republic is searching to find answers for the questions the Condors have asked of them. Again, this is fantastic practice for the coming European Championships. Czech Republic last European cycle, like I said, making the final of Windmill, and then I think placing 20th at the EUC. So high variance team, which a gunslinging team like them often can be. Again, this though, this year on this cycle, making the deep into the bracket, into the semifinals. We'll see if they can make something happen against these Condors, as right now Gilligan has all the field in front of him. I just talk about how much I love the fact he threw a dump scuba. And there, the Condor is scoring oh so easily. I don't know where the disc, oh. <laughs> just running the disc with him. Well, lots of different types of celebrations for a team that are having a good time. Czechs really want to take an opportunity at this point to stamp their foot down and establish themselves in the game. And the Condors said, you know what? We're just going to walk right past you. 6-2 now the score. The Condors one away from the halftime. Points cap a little bit weird here as we, we tournament was kind of scrambling to figure out a fair approach to the games today that they, since they were being shortened. So halftime's at 7. It's just a mirror half. There's no time at the half. However, the game is still to 15. So basically the philosophy is we want to have a halftime. So in that short period of time for the games that are going long, let's try and get it happen a little early. But still, if the game is kind of a blowout, we want to still let the Swiss draw do its thing. So let them go to 15 if they're going to go to 15. Half at 7, game to 15. As the Condors look to take that half in a commanding lead, while the Czechs are going to see what they can answer with their offensive drive. Fencil. Jago. Such a standard way for these possessions to start off. As they look down the field, Prusak. The first few steps taken securely, and there's the dump hammer back to Sladek. Gets along to Fenzel. They like their old dump passes that are hammers. Like I gotta tell you, I like them too. Chago sends it down the line. Taken in by Yakim. Fenzel. Makes himself available again. Sneaky player. Sending it back to Dostal. And across. This is good from the Czechs, but we've seen them do this many times before and then come unstuck at the last second. Prusak with the big dump around to Sladek. Like the attempt at the defensive pressure, even if it wasn't very effective. Prusak. Just escaping the boot. Getting it into the middle with a beautiful break. Dostal. But still not able to really get past that halfway line. And a huge bid from Sladek, but he can't collect the errant bobbling disc. And tragedy again. Unfortunate there. I thought he was definitely going to come down with that one as Condors now look to take half, 7-2. They definitely got the means. The Czech Republic will be getting offense at the beginning of the second half. Messing spreads that one around. So the Condors fighting their way down the pitch in commanding and convincing fashion. Mitra. Back into the middle and a big blade all the way across. 
huge bid into the back of the intended receiver. A lot of contact there, but Tran, I think, saying, all right, there was contact, but I wasn't getting to that disc either way, so. A very fair perspective to take on it. As we have another look. Fensel now marshalling things for the Czech offensive line. Dostal, Jago. The Condors have done a fantastic job of really dissuading Czechs from taking chances on their deep shots. Something they normally love stretching out with a bit of. Fensel. Oh, the disc is going back. Disc is going back for a pick. Seem to be in fair agreement. I think Fensel is arguing that the pick doesn't seem to have affected their play. And I believe in USAU rules, continuation is only one throw up to the pick. Whereas in Wift, if they say, okay, it's unlikely that you'll have no effect after three throws. But if you agree that it had no effect, the disc will stay. And we see here Fensel's keeping the disc. But perhaps to his detriment as he throws it slightly errant and into the waiting hands of Aaron Weaver, who spreads it across. And here come the Condors again, going for a big one. Lots of float, but lots of misdirection. And look at the speed and the hunger at it. Checo, he's not in any mood to give up. First, I thought that disc was going to go way too far for both of them. Then I thought Tran, oh, his closing speed is good. But Checo coming from the back, putting his body on the line. What a play. What a layout. And the Czechs, they're fighting. They're getting the Ds back, but so far not able to generate too much offensive movement in a confident way yet. That seems to be the weak point of the Condors. Their D-line offense is again, Weaver's able to just wait for the disc to make its way back to him. As if it was magnetically attracted to the American. Going for the, there's the foul. It did seem to come out a little bit wonky, Svatos. Like a terrier on that force as the American player gives the American hand signal for foul, which is different than the Wifta hand signal foul, has to be said. All the interesting things we learn. As now they just take their time resetting it. They tried to force it a few times and it hasn't quite worked out for them. Weaver has a big opportunity deep. Able to get it down the field. Turner, front of the end zone, pops it in and Mitra completes the possession to take half, 7-2. So that is 7-2, and the Czechs will get offense on the beginning of the second half. I believe they aren't really changing where they're starting up, so it doesn't really affect anything here. So looking like, of course you don't want to count it over until it's over, Condors are probably punching their ticket into the finals, likely against GB, though we have no idea how that game's going against Austria. Austria looked extremely good in their quarterfinal earlier, uh, winning that one against Italy. Italy a bit shaken up. I think they were preparing on the wrong fields. They came about five minutes into the game, arriving to the game, and uh, they had a bit of a stumble early on. I think they just weren't mentally prepared. Had a great comeback in the second half, but it was too little too late, as the cap rules say here, that once that horn goes off at 55 minutes, we're only playing cap plus one if it's within one. And at that point, it was, I believe, within two. So the game was over at 11-9. If, if the Condors play GB, they did tie each other in the fourth round of Swiss draw, 14-14. You have to imagine they're probably telling each other, we've got unfinished business that we're going to settle on 14 Sunday. 14-14 is one hell of a way for a game to end. The Swiss draw rounds, you're allowed to draw. And I think both teams would what like a draw to have this game be basically a game to 29, starting at 14-14. I'm gonna see if I can get that. If these two teams are in the final, I think we should start the scoreboard on the stream at 14-14. Have it keep going from there. <laughs> that seems like the appropriate way to approach it, as the Czechs try and find the appropriate way to approach the mountain that currently lies in front of them. A five point deficit, 20 minutes left in the semi-final of Windmill 2019. The 15th iteration as the Czechs come flying out. A few different faces trying to mix it up, the O-line Feeling a little bit more confident, moving like it as well. Lots of defensive pressure. None of it really coming to any fruition. They keep pushing. This is better from the Czechs. More relaxed, more fluid. It's 
Still taking their time, giving their cutters space, and that's a beautiful possession. Working it through just about everybody until the opportunity was available. 7-3 now the score is 35 minutes, tally up on the clock. 20 minutes left before we're gonna hear that cap. Bit of a hole for the checks to get out of, but not insurmountable yet. No. However, how the Condors have been playing, it'll be very difficult to get there. They need breaks. They have won, but that was serendipitous in how they earned the turn. Just 10 points ago as well. First point of the game since then, Condors have been clean on their offensive possessions. Clean and easy at times. Confident. Just having fun out there. Yes. Confidence probably the nicer way to say it. They're smiling, they're laughing, they're joking, and everything they're throwing is coming off how they want it to come off. Let's see if the Czechs can do something to disrupt that pattern. Sorkin, you've been one nil a few times. What do you think of this edition so far, in terms of the competition, in terms of the festival vibe? 15th edition of Windmill, how are you enjoying your weekend? I'm having a fantastic time. There isn't as much hype around the competition side of things, because obviously last year with World Club Championships, Windmill was a testing ground for a lot of teams. However, party-wise, things have been fantastic. Thursday and Friday night were both thoroughly enjoyable as we see a huge bid easily collected. This is excellent stuff from the Condors. Isolation downfield, only one-on-one. -on -one. How do you set that up? And despite the best efforts of the Czech defender, not able to get there in time. Still a great bid. I thought that was going to be a clean, easy catch. Definitely made it harder as we see him fall over on the hip bump. Hope we can get that slow motion replay of that celebration. So Prach got very close. But in the end, I believe it was Weaver able to comfortably take it down. And this Condors team promised to be quite the exciting matchup against whoever they play in the final. It's going to be tough, you know, especially if it's GB who make the final, because you never, well, I never want a team from outside of Europe to win Windmill. I like these American pickup teams, but always prefer it when they lose. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but the issue I have then is I don't want GB to win Windmill. I mean, they're close enough to being outside of Europe. That's uh, <laughs> very true. Not close enough for my liking, but, uh, <laughs> you know, we can still hope. I mean, they were supposed to be by now, like five times by oh, now. Oh, it's, times it's been a whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> One, I'm not sure. You probably feel more acutely in France and in Ireland than you would in some of the further reaches of Europe, such as the Czech Republic or Austria, but still. Let's see. I'm sure they have problems of their own, like this Czech national team currently dealing with the problem of a stifling. Condor's defense. Chego leading from the front as he so frequently does. Sladek, disc in hand. Centers to the middle. Frushak. Slatos. Sladek. The Czechs are able to get a lot of movement around this part of the pitch, but never really able to turn it into anything. Creating good space for each other, eventually able to hit it. Now that's better from the Czechs. Working together downfield. Svatosh thinks about the leading pass, goes for it. That is by no means an easy one. And it was beautifully weighted, but perhaps the receiver just not quite prepared for it as now the Condors come back in the other direction and immediately send it deep. It's going to need a big grab or just a quick man, and it gets the ladder. Cameron Warnier or Werner. Him getting the big D actually was great presence of mind. I mean, he went for the play, and I think at some point you think, all right, that guy's going to make that easy catch. And then off the bobble, he put the pressure on. So he's, he's there. No matter what's going to happen, we're going to put as much pressure as we can. And sometimes it pays off, like on that D. And then the great huck from Joram Mosink to get things going as the Czechs extend their lead to 9-3. I also love that about Warnier as well. As soon as he got the D turn, he just took off, and Mosink obliged. It's doubly painful for Yaramir Yakim as well, because probably will in his own mind consider that a drop more than anything else. It was quite a nice setup by Svatoš. And then to get beaten deep right afterwards, you never want that to happen to you, especially not in that context. We see here, it just bounces off his hand. That we'll is uh, fairly close to where the sun would be. <laughs> if Werner wasn't there, it would have been an easy catch. Very true. And look at Mossink. Line drive. 
I thought it was too fast. I thought it was too far ahead. Warner's too end. fast. Perfect. I'm not sure he was in. Well, too late to take <laughs> umbrage with it now. <laughs> Moving quickly along. You know who would have called that? Czech Republic in the first three points. <laughs> At this point. Maybe they were just too far away. They didn't have good perspective. He was all alone down there. Unfortunate. As now the Czechs look to go back. Fencil. Fighting. Trying to help his team find a bit of spirit. A bit of hunger. Sladek. We back. see Condors trying a bit of a junk set here. Kind of one person marking the handlers. They're, they're playing off of the handlers. Just trying to block every space in front. I think trying to extend the clock a bit here. Make these points long and they know they're going to have this victory. Well, there's the kind of blades that really tear it apart. You get it around the wall, past the wing. And lovely stuff, quick on the go from the Czechs. And beautiful link up play. I think that was Dostal in the corner, just standing there. I'm here, I'm here. And Chego just doesn't stop moving. He is at any point. insane this game. Um, the score line's not the best for the Czechs right now, but Chego has impressed me immensely, laying out, making huge plays. He's had two big layout Ds, there with a nice score. You haven't even seen that much of his. He's been leading the offense, focal point for them. A lot of big throws. Hasn't really uncorked any uh, shots to the end zone, but even there, the link-up play he had. As we see here, Svathos plays it in. And he just immediately gives it, and then he's off. Clears through. As soon as Dostal gets it, who's there cutting for it? I do think, I mean, again, it's, I'm not sure exactly what the tactics the Condors are here, if they're just trying to make the points longer, but on person-to-person -person defense, I think Condors have the athletic matchups. Playing a junky zone set that they were doing in that last point, I think, plays into the hands of the Czechs. The Czechs are great at throwing. They know each other really well. That's not the advantage that the Condors have against the Czechs, and I think that's why that point looked so easy there. I'd have to agree with you. It just doesn't make as much sense to me that you would have the Condors, or as the Condors, you would play zone, unless you were maybe trying to save legs. Oh, they got nothing else tomorrow. to play for today, yeah. They play well, that for the party, <laughs> the beer race. There's plenty of things you still want to keep some energy for. You mad. Oh, there's a nice scuba. Love a tasty old scuba. And now they're starting to have a little bit of fun. The throws get a smidge cheekier. The process stays largely the same, though. Good work in the space. Isolating a single cutter. And it's just so difficult to stop. You have to constantly be ready as a defensive presence. The Czechs are doing a good job of stopping the open side unders. And now we're seeing how good Condors can work the disc on the break side as well. That's the problem. We saw the Austrians do this as well. They do stop. They did eventually find a way to stop the Condors plan A, but their plan B is still really good. Almost everything they try, they do with experience and grace. But again, you just see them working it down the pitch so calmly. Gilligan has been running this show. Mossink laying out to stay in bounds. His hand did come down on that line, but they're arguing that he caught it before hitting the line, which I think is accurate. A lot of uh, Czech players agreed with him. I personally would have said he was out, but I don't have the benefit of being right next to him. That makes the score 10-4. Scoreboard a little bit off here with the 9-5, but it's 10-4 now in favor of the Condors. Really wanted them to throw that hammer. As there's the final shot to Yoram. Yeah, he definitely caught that and then hit the ground. He was in. Goal for Mr. Mosink. From the Dutch native who's traveled and played all over the world with a litany of club teams but this weekend, gotten the club team to travel to him. Which is a nice little change of pace. <laughs> Bringing over more people. You see that the lovely Tokai cleats making their appearance. Tokai, one of the partners here at Windmill. Check them out. Got some nice shoes. Top um, quality shoes for top quality players. Wearing mine right now. <laughs> All right. Had time I was wondering uh, why you're doing this plug there, Ravi. There's a bit of insider trading going on. Am I going to get any free boots? Uh, I don't know. I don't have that kind of control. Sure you don't. 
I've always wondered what kind of control you do have, because you're definitely part organizer. You definitely play in this tournament. You also just show up and do the commentary every now and again, generally when there's a really good game on. So I've always wondered exactly what depth of control you do possess as more the Czechs try to you. find... Yeah, <laughs> well, that's not difficult. The Czechs try to find some control in this game themselves. Good work, but we've seen them put in good work. What we need is some brilliance. Pencil, no stranger to the concept or the action. Sladek, another man who's had some really stellar moments in this tournament. As they play out what could be the last 10 minutes of their competitive campaign. Big pick call. Hand signals being shown. Clock's ticking again, 46 minutes now, less than 10 minutes left. The Czechs have to get within one. It's gonna start with this hold. Dostal, there's an awful lot of float on that and just too much in the end, allowing David Ritchie to get underneath it. And there's a huge shot by the Condors. To someone, or is it to no one? I mean, maybe he's trying to join in with the Groot warm-up for the upcoming semi-final that they have. Piers Hrutz has qualified. I do see the French mixed team warming up by their side. I'm curious if they'll be matching up or they're... I'm not sure exactly how the semis have gone. I see shenanigans making their way to the sideline. It appears that the Americans from Las Vegas have also made their way into the semi. Yes, they won their quarter that was on the stream. So that leaves one more team. I'm looking around. Ah, I'd see the Germans. Germany mixed is over on the opposite side of the pitch warming up. So I'm guessing it's going to be Germany, France, Hrutz shenanigans, by the way. By the it place. is Germany, France, and Hrutz shenanigans. Should be interesting. My prediction for this tournament was that it would be Hrutz versus France in the final. We'll see how correct I was. Still one more round today. Don't go anywhere. Mixed semifinal rounds. We'll get both of them on the stream. And tomorrow, of course, the grand finals, where we'll get full length games. And Back to proper full-length games, eh, Ravi? Full-length games with a full crowd, as Windmill loves to do. They promise to be absolutely spectacular. Asvatos surveying, waiting, looking for options. Gets in the form of Dostal downfield. Sladek completely free, correcting his cut. He waits for them all to clear in front of him. Dostal able to get ahead. And the Czechs working their way down the pitch. And it's a quick pop into Chego, but not quite in yet. Front corner needs somebody to be free on the dump. Sladek gets there late, but does get there, and that's the important part. And lashing it back to the front corner. 10-5 the score now, still in favor of the Condors. Again, 48 minutes on the clock, leaving a little under seven minutes left till that jingle goes off and sends one of these teams to the final. Right now looking like Condors. You do wonder, at what part does it become polite for us to just assume that it's the Condors? I think it's once the stream's over. We're not allowed to be like, look, it's going to be the Condors. There's seven minutes, there's five points. They only have to get four points. That has is true. It has to be within one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it has to be four in a row. I mean, realistically, doesn't it, can't it be three points? Like, they have to have scored three points, then the Before horn the goes. Horn. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And then they okay, have to score Okay, so, that like, horn. we just managed to chop off two of the points they need. <laughs> You think they'd maybe <laughs> hurrying a little bit more to get off the line <laughs> as the Condors are already ready and Czech are still discussing. Clock management, not something you have to do as much in whiff diff rules as you always get the cap plus one. So True. maybe they're saying we're preparing for EUC, not this game. So that is the other aspect as like well. Like we're going to play there. It is about staying true to who you are or at least to who you want to be by the time you rock up to the European Championships. And whether they win or lose this game, they'll still get one more chance tomorrow to play against a national side, whether it be GB or Austria. Another preparation in store for them. Should they wind up playing against Austria in that match, I think it'd be brilliant for them to take that many scalps home with them from Windmill. A lot of teams that are looking to really make big strides this year. As the Condors continue to make big strides on the pitch, so difficult to cover, so much space covered. Settling, isolating, and there's a beautiful leading pass to the end zone. Tries to jump in, can't get there. So they take the easy pop. And really, it kind of felt like the Condors could have done basically anything. Aiden Hall could have gone straight to the cutter or the thrower. Could I would have, have gone to the opposite side. Uh, that's what I would have done, but he decides to run 
just through. It's just the confidence that they have. They figure no matter where we go, the disc will be thrown to us. Whatever my instinct takes me, it's going to be a score. 11-5 now, Condors making it tough. Five minutes left in this game. Czech Republic now need to get four in a row to get themselves before that horn into position to score one to make it within one. And that's just a beautiful dish. Scooping it up, sending it over. Excellent stuff by Condors. A level we've come to expect from them. A level the Czechs have at times matched. Have had a couple of players be able to go up against, but not really as a unit. It's more their bright sparks have shown that they can kind of hang with the team. And the whole core aspect of national teams is getting your worst player up to the highest possible level. Yeah, the Czechs not the deepest team. I would say their O-line is a bit stronger than their D-line. So what impressed me this game is that their D-line was able to come out strong, get that break to start. That's something they can take home with them. They can study the tape here, say, what kind of energy did we bring this game to be able to get a break on this intense Condors team? And use that when they go to Gior in two weeks' time. So now, Jago, as he so frequently does, takes his position at the front of the offense. Sladek, a man who I genuinely thought was a cutter after watching their first game earlier this weekend, but is a very versatile young player. Yeah, the Czechs have a very versatile offense in general. They seem to flow players in and out of handler space and in and out of cutter space. Exactly what I'm talking about there with Be the classic handler getting the score. Beautiful link up plays Vatosh, throwing a high arcing flick blade all the way to Jago. 11-6, the Czechs still fighting. Three minutes left here in this game. Refusing to go down, and that's what you like to see. Shows that they really do believe their mantra that we're here to get better. That's what this tournament is all about. We want to be able to play the way we play against this kind of defense. And I mean, in fairness, there aren't many uh, things that could rival this kind of defense. They got five breaks on the GB team in that 14 all draw. Although perhaps that also means that they yes, exactly, gave up five not, not so uh, <laughs> careful with the disc. <laughs> That's less breaks than Ireland gave up to them when Ireland lost, I believe, 13-10 in the end, which was another screamer of a game. So you're talking about the Ireland GB game. That was the Ireland GB yes. game, 10-10. So we await the final few exchanges. Finland battling hard against Cosmic Girls over on the other side. The Finnish have always been known for their ability to give trouble to the Russians. Women's division, one of the most competitive at Wimmel, I'm pretty sure. They had a two-point game, Finland versus Ireland, uh, with SC Inkinen putting in the final score for the Finnish team. They were, they were finishing their game on the same field that I was playing on in the mixed division. Huge hammer all the way over the top. Condor is able to get it. A nice, relaxing play again. Wouldn't mind, maybe they get a little bit spicier. Now the game is coming to a close. There's no harm in it. And you want to talk about handlers. What a grab! Somehow steals that off the ground. I thought that was easily going to be a turn. The Condors have surprised me time and time again with their explosiveness, with their quickness, and with their ability to catch discs that they have no business catching. I asked for spice. <laughs> and boy, howdy, did I get it. That one's going to burn. Grabs it, the trailing edge, with his hand near the disc, somehow gets it. And that point was all about Shane Early. And just talking a bit more about other rounds in the women's division. As here we're hold on, hold on. Let's, oh, yeah, let's, let's talk, talk a bit more about this. Okay, 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 okay. I'm not quite ready to move on. First off, not the best inside backhand break, but it worked. We'll let you have it early. But how are you going to go get that? Uh. Trailing edge. Some would say you should go for, with that with the left hand, but he says, no, I want to make it more, more spectacular. Get that from the back side. Uh, hold on. Who am I showing off for? Am I showing off for, like, a city? No, no, this is like the biggest tournament in Europe. I'm showing off for a whole continent. I'll, I'll go with the higher your hand, the higher level of difficulty. Trailing edge, scoops that one. Great grab. Magnificent. You can't really stand up to that as the score is 6-12. Yeah, like what I think was the 1-8 quarterfinal in the women's division, Germany, France. Apparently it was 9-10 when the Hooter went off and uh, France was almost there to make it universe, but then Germany ended up winning by two 
in that one. So even the 1-8, very close in the women's division. Lots of competitive games there. Men's division, we've had kind of two teams shining above the rest as the Condors and GB. The Czechs here trying to make a last ditch effort. Dostal points where he wants it. Doesn't get the cut. There goes the buzzer. This will be the final point. The Czechs looking to end on a high. Svatos sends it, and it's a brilliant grab. If you're gonna go out of a tournament, that's the way you wanna go out. Yaramir Yakim snatching that one out of the sky. Have to say, great performance in the second half here by the Czechs. They went down 5-1 early, and I believe basically have traded out since then. And that's a great performance uh, by the Czechs. It will help them, give them some confidence, going to that third place game, likely against Austria. But Lorcan, I'm hoping, I'm praying, we get this Condors GB game tomorrow in the final with the crowds. That's gonna be a cracker. Please tune in for that. But don't go away. Coming up next, we got Crutch shenanigans. We got France-Germany. We got the mixed semifinals.